So I think the, the fastest we've taken the car thus far is around 110 miles an hour through the tunnel. Um, but that's a little, it's a little scary right now. So um, probably in your trip, you'll maybe, you maybe go 40, 50 miles an hour. But uh, the, this system is designed to do uh, over 150 miles an hour uh, through the tunnel. And um, I mean, would it be incredible if you could travel around LA, New York, DC, Chicago, Paris, London, anywhere at, a, at 150 miles an hour? That'd be ph phenomenal. Um, I mean, it's just, traffic is soul destroying. It's like acid on the soul. It's horrible. We must, the thing is, like, uh, white tunnels. Uh, you know, sometimes people say, what about like flying cars and all these other things? Um, and, and, and what about uh, mass transit? Um, I want to be clear, we're not opposed to mass transit. We think mass transit is fine. Like, let, let's you, you could go with a flying car, but there, there are some drawbacks to flying cars. They, they are, um, essentially, it's a helicopter with wheels. Uh, and they, they make a lot of noise. There's a lot of wind force. Uh, and the probability of something falling on your head if, if there are a bunch of flying cars around is much higher than if there are not. So rain or hurricane or something, suddenly you can't go anywhere. But tunnels are immune to weather. It does not matter if there's a tornado. It doesn't matter if there's like an ice storm. It doesn't matter what's going on above ground. If you're in a tunnel, you're safe and secure. Um, when you when you ride the tunnel, you'll you'll um, see the, the the entrance that's basically in the backyard of a, of a house. Okay, the the neighbor of that house. When we broke through, when, when the boring machine broke through the um, through the other side, was watching TV. The neighbor did not even stop watching TV, okay? That, that's how subtle it was. So you will not hear, see, or feel the tunnels being created. You, you can weave uh, the boring system tunnel network into the fabric of a city without changing the character of the city. The city will still feel the same. You're not going to get in anyone's way. You're not going to obstruct anyone's view. It, it, it can, you'll have this revolutionary transport system and your city will still feel like your city. So typically a, a, a tunnel will take three to six months per mile. Um, in some cases, it'll take a year per mile and, and they can cost up to a billion dollars per mile. Um, in fact, uh, the, the, the LA subway extension that just got completed uh, cost $2 billion for two and a half miles. There was a subway extension in New York that I think cost $2 billion for a mile. So clearly something needs to be done to revolutionize tunneling technology. The fastest uh, tunneling machine in the world right now is 14 times slower than a snail. Okay, so when I, when I say like, yeah, we're gonna have like this tunneling machine that can do a mile a week. It, it's, it, we're not talking about the sandworms of Dune here, okay? <laughs> it's still slow. It's just as fast as a snail. <laughs> you will be able to escape it. As, as we got into it, we learned more and more about uh, tunneling and, and why they take why it takes a long time. The um, first of all, it, 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 in a given hour of tunneling, only about 10 minutes of the hour is spent actually digging. Then the other 50 minutes are spent erecting the re, the tunnel reinforcements, laying down tracks, doing logistics, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so, just just automating the segment placement. Um, and solving the logistics issues will actually give you about a five-fold increase in, in tunneling speed. A lot of these things, like when you boil it down, it's not actually, it's, it's hard to do. It's, not, it's difficult engineering, but there's, there's no Nobel Prize required here. This is, it's work, but it's very solvable. The, the, the combination of automated, automated segment um, placement and, and being able to drill while tunneling, like I said, is about a five-fold increase in, in speed. Then with our design, we've also tripled the power of the drill. So, so it can dr drill three times faster. We've modified the cutter design. Uh, the, the, the dirt removal is continuous. It get a big tunnel and then put uh, water mains and electricity lines inside the tunnel. And then uh, they can actually service, like if they had a, a, a water main break, instead of it flooding uh, the, the main street in the city, you, they can actually go in and in, into the the boring company tunnel and fix the water main. Um, this is also very important because then you can intersperse the stations throughout the city um, and not dump a ton of traffic in one location. Um, so by, by distributing, by having many, many stations, 
uh, you, you, you ensure that people get closer to their destination um, and you don't disrupt the traffic pattern around where the, where the, uh, the, the loop exits. Um, and then you, depending upon how much room you have, you can have an elevator, which only takes up a few parking spaces. You can have like a, a, a spiral ramp or, or a long ramp. Um, and then you combine that with fast, low cost tunnels. And, and, and I think you've got a very exciting transport solution. You can, you can just keep expanding the number of tunnels. So one of the questions we often ask is, well, sure, if, if you build this tunnel, then people will use it and then it'll just get full and, and then we'll be back to where we started and, and it's like adding a lane on the freeway. You add the lane, but then the traffic expands to fully available volume. But the thing about going 3D is that you could have like three, you could have six, you could have 16 tunnels going in the same direction. So you can have as many tunnels as you want. And I'm pretty sure everyone in the United States is not gonna move to LA. But you could literally build enough tunnels to transport everyone in the United States in LA. There is no limit. And also, the, the, the way it works is uh, there'll be a main artery for the, for the tunnel, which travels at 150 miles an hour. Uh, it's kind of like an underground highway. So if you, if you think of say, the way a subway works, a, a subway you, is like a bunch of stop streets. You, you, you keep stopping. So the average speed on a subway is typically, including stops, is about 10 miles an hour. Um, but the, the way the loop would work is that you'd have, you'd have main arteries that are traveling at 150 miles an hour, and only when you want to go to, to an exit would you have an off-ramp. So you, can, so you can travel the vast majority of your journey without stopping at 150 miles an hour, and only slow down when you get to your exit. And then automatically transfer from one, from one tunnel to another. It's like a 3D highway system underground, basically. self-contained steel structures um, and so so the it, when, in order to insert the elevator all you do is tr dig a hole in the ground real fast then bring the prefabricated elevator in sections drop it down uh, connect the sections and you're done there's not like some extended uh, construction project L let, let us do everything we can along every direction to alleviate traffic allow people to get 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 home get get to work um, and not spend hours on the road um, whatever it takes um, and, and this, I should say also, we will have continuously uh, operating uh, cars in, in the loop for those that do not have a car. So this will be, we'll actually give priority to pedestrians and cyclists um, with, with cars that are continuously circulating in the loop. So even if you don't have a car, you can still use the system. This is, I really want to emphasize that. Uh, when, when you're driving down the road normally, they retract and go under the car, you don't even see them. But when you get into the tunnel, they deploy and allow you to go through a narrow tunnel very quickly and effectively like, like a little train. So this, this uh, even though it's like a small thing, it's a small but very important element of the technology. So to be clear, this is not intended to be restricted to a Tesla. Obviously, for convenience sake, I use a Tesla. Um, right, that'd be silly if I didn't. Um, but the this, this is not intended to be some sort of walled garden or, or just for Teslas or something like that. Any autonomous uh, EV can be outfitted with these guide wheels. It, it means you can go very, very fast and brake very quickly. Like we expect that you can probably do uh, one vehicle per second through the tunnel. Um, typically on, on, a, on a freeway you can do, without autonomous vehicles, you can do a, a car every two seconds. But with autonomy, we think you can do a car at least every, every second. Um, and with radar-based and vision-based braking, you can do so very safely. Um, 
it, it, and it's, it's, it's backwards compatible with the road system, which is important. <laughs> um, and, and, and it can take you, you can literally go, I mean, you can think of these like, they're sort of like wormholes. It, it like, it's just like you drop down the worm, like you're, you're driving around, oh, I need to get to the other side of LA or New York or whatever, drop down the wormhole, phew, pop out the other side, um, and then you can just drive normally. I mean, I think this is like really a panacea. As I was mentioning, elevators prefabricated. You can also do a passive spiral uh, ramp, um, and you can install you can install these anywhere: parking lots, garages, uh, little alcoves. Uh, the elevator itself only takes as much as two parking spaces on the street. So if if you can, you just have a station in exchange for two parking spaces, and that's what I mean. That's that's basically the size of a, of a station. So you can you can interleave these stations throughout the throughout cities wherever there's a, um, you know a couple parking spaces um, or a little little patch of road, pretty much anywhere. You can actually even have them come up in underground garages. So that, that <laughs> and that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Frustrated commuters across the country may welcome tech titan Elon Musk's latest big disruptive idea. How about this underground tunnels to beat traffic congestion? Last night in Los Angeles, he unveiled the first tunnel in what he hopes will become a network of underground highways, he says. Now, this initial stretch is only for tests and won't be used by the public. It runs between the headquarters of Musk's SpaceX company and a parking lot behind a closed business a little more than a mile away. When Musk took me for a ride the other day, it was an eye-opening four-minute journey. You can go ahead, I think. How fast is this? <laughs> this is still slow. We're this doing, is slow? only doing 20, 28, 30 oh miles an hour. Oh my God, oh my we'll God, speed oh up my God. After we get around the corner. This isn't just any tunnel. We can, go, oh. we can get 100, no problem, but we'll, we'll, we'll take it easy for you. <laughs> it's Elon Musk tunnel. And to understand why we're speeding through it, you need to go back a couple of years when he decided he had had enough of Los Angeles traffic gridlock. Either we try something new or we will be stuck in traffic hell for the rest of our lives. I, I started thinking, well, maybe this could be underground. This is the underground network he envisions. Electric cars using street-level elevators to drop down into a series of tunnels. Autonomous technology in the cars ensure that they don't run into each other, despite going speeds over 125 miles an hour. Tunnels are, the, in my view, the only solution to urban congestion because we have a 2D road network and we have buildings in 3D. Like, and everyone wants to pile out of those buildings and into those buildings at the same time. Obviously, you're gonna have a traffic jam. No one was building such a system, so Musk formed the amusingly named Boring Company and started building it himself. He hired Steve Davis to be the company's new president. Because Steve, you're an engineer at SpaceX. You've been there for? 15 years. So when Elon came to you and said, I have this idea to do what? What did he say to you? Uh, go dig a hole. He had no experience doing tunnels and said, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. See, that didn't give you pause. Learn from scratch. Ah. So probably the first day, you won't be the best at it, but then you'll, you'll get better. About a year ago, that company started digging what has become today's 1.2 mile long test tunnel. It's in Hawthorne, near Los Angeles. Unless we can make tunnel digging at least 10 times cheaper, then digging tunnels will not be an effective means of alleviating traffic. It'll just cost too much. These are tunnel reinforcing segments. Musk's vision depends on him being able to do it all, faster and cheaper than current industry standards. While modern subway tunnels in Los Angeles cost around $900 million per mile, he says he built this for about 10 million. One way he saved money, he literally made it dirt cheap. When digging tunnels, it's quite expensive to have all this dirt trucked off somewhere. And we're like, well, why don't we try to use that dirt for something useful? So we are creating bricks on site. Um, and you can pick them up for in a very cheap 10 cents a brick. So all of these bricks yeah. came out of the tunnel? Yes. But speeding up the process was also a cause for concern. The city of Hawthorne granted Musk an exemption from typical environmental impact reviews required under California law. And in nearby neighborhoods where the tunnel runs, some residents told us they never even heard about the project until it was almost finished. Some members of the community seem to feel that they didn't really have input into that decision. We actually um, 
sent letters to everyone. I think that there's normally like a, a radius that you have to inform people. We double that radius and inform people. You know, and I think in any situation, there's going to be a few percentage of people that grumble. There was also grumbling from another area, the wealthier Los Angeles neighborhood of Brentwood, which is nearby Musk's proposed second test tunnel along busy Sepulveda Boulevard. Community groups sued the city of Los Angeles for also granting an environmental review waiver there. In August, Musk announced he was no longer building that tunnel. But there's some like retired lawyers in Brentwood that all they do is sue, like literally, they just automatically sue. It's like a hobby. But those lawsuits sort of shut it down in Sepulveda, did it not? No, we decided that uh, another test tunnel isn't really needed. I am not phased by lawsuits. You can't go off the tracks, right? No. That's what you're saying? No, you cannot go off the tracks. At first glance, the tunnel is a bit daunting. It's only 12 feet in diameter, so it's much more claustrophobic than most transportation tunnels. We'll, we'll be able to go like 150 miles an hour if we want. If you're going that fast, what's to prevent it from crashing into another car ahead of you? That's what I worry about that. Uh, because the autopilot has radar and cameras that uh, will automatically slow you down before you uh, impact another car. You would only be allowed to go through the tunnel on autopilot. At the end of our four minute adventure, that the verdict. <laughs> that was scary, but that was kind of cool. <sighs> And by the time we started up the elevator that returned us to the surface... And it'll be faster in practice. This is just going slow because it's uh, early days. I don't want to go any faster than what we just did. No, thank you. And when it was all over, it was easier to see how this proof-of-concept tunnel could actually be a preview of the world to come. At this point, I'm confident this can revolutionize cities and get rid of uh, soul-destroying traffic. Well, I had lots of questions. Elon Musk is a very confident young man. So obviously, I th first thing I thought about California, earthquake-prone area. But for anybody worried about that and a tunnel collapse, he has an answer for that, too. He's told me that earthquakes really do all of their damage on the surface, not underground. He says they're like waves hitting a boat floating on top of the ocean and that you'd rather be in a submarine deep underwater if there's a big storm. He also points out that historically, People who were in subway tunnels during earthquakes escaped serious injuries, like the 1968 Mexico City quake, when zero people died in, the, in their uh, subway tunnels. I mean, so I kept saying, well, what about this, what about this, what about this? And he has a question for everything. I think by the Answer, time I was yeah. done, he was ready for me. That's okay, you may go along now. You know, he's been in the news lately. There was a lot of controversy about his personality, and it was very clear. He made that very clear to me in no uncertain terms. That's not what, what this conversation was about. We had booked this interview a long time ago. But I, I love how his brain operates. He looks at a problem. What he did with the Brooks is ingenious. You know, the, you, 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 it costs a lot of money to take away the dirt. Why not make bricks that we can yeah. sell? And if, you, if you're working with a nonprofit or something that is uh, helping people, you get the bricks for free. So, you know, he's always thinking about how he can make it, make things better. I, and I, I do, I admire that about him. Uh, one, I read what another reporter who'd gone down that tunnel as well wrote, and he said that, that Batman would have been jealous. Yes. <laughs> That's a good way to sum yeah, it up. That is a good way yeah. to put it. <clears throat> very good way to put it. We've there, got to address that. We'll have cars underground. We'll probably have cars flying in the future, but something yes. to alleviate yeah. what is this traffic and infrastructure mess. He's thinking two steps ahead. There is much more of our interview with Elon Musk on our website. You can see the wild ride through the tunnel, and here what we talked about when it was over and he said gail time for you to go check it out at cbsthismorning.com <laughs>